Hi, my name is Jonathan Hicks, and this evening I'm joined by... Steve. Mark. And we just finished playing Goo Gong, I think is perhaps how you pronounce that, uh, which is a heavy Euro. Now, let me just stand back here and show you the board. There's an awful lot going on here, so I'm just going to give you a very brief overview. Uh, essentially, you're in China, and you're trying to gain points by taking actions in lots of different places. Um, you have a hand of cards... And when it's your turn, you play one of these cards on one of the action spaces. But the number at the top left here has to be bigger than the number where you place it. So, for example, I could take my four and place it on the three. As long as anything higher than that is fine. And you swap it for the card. So I place that down. And this one goes into a discard pile. Now, on the next round of the game, the cards in my discard card pile will become my new hand. So you're kind of thinking when you put your cards down... Oh, this is a, a high, this is a seven, this is quite high, so this is a good one. And you're trying to get the good cards as well as take the actions you want. So you've got to think about that. Uh, but when you play a card, you're going to do two different actions, potentially. You do the action it says on the card, first of all, and then you do the action of the location you're in. Um, so I'll sort of explain the important actions, if you like. Uh, but in general, uh, in fact, one very key thing is this track here, you have your emissary, I think, or envoy, this might be called. Um, but if you take this action... You can move either one space up the track, plop, or you can pay cubes, which are like workers, and you have an available supply of cubes here, uh, in order to get a double move. So if I spent two workers, then I could move twice up the track instead of once. I'd go twice. Uh, and then you also get to move up on this track. There's quite a few tracks in this game. So I could move one space up on this track. And this track kind of is for deciding ties. Whoever's highest up in this game for any kind of tie in the game uh, is going to win the tie. But this track is very important because partly whoever gets up to the top first is going to get points, like end game points here, and then second place kind of gets five and then three, etc. But also, if you don't get to the top of this track by the end of the game, your final score will be zero. You cannot win the game unless you get to the top of that track. So it's very important you advance on that track there. Uh, a few other things then. You can try and build the Great Wall of China. So um, the action here, you can either put one cube on the Great Wall of China or you can spend a cube to put two cubes on. And this is quite expensive because from your supply here, let's imagine I have some more cubes, I can spend a cube by putting it to my used pile and you've got to take two more cubes from your pile here and you're kind of adding them onto the Great Wall of China. Now, if it gets in a four-player game, if you get up to the four mark, that triggers the Great Wall of China. And at this point, um, whoever has the most, so in the case it would be blue, removes all of their cubes. So they would go back to blue's kind of used pile. These all slide down, but then they're going to get three points. This is the victory point symbol. Uh, victory points just tracked around the edge of the board. And they're going to get an advance on this track. So blue, who's already at the top, actually, will get to move on this track. Uh, so that's kind of how the Great Wall of China works. But then, after that's done, you also get to potentially spend points on this track for various things. So, for example, I could spend one point here to gain one of my cubes back. So you take one of your used cubes and you put it back in your available cubes pile. But you can do other things like you can get extra cubes. You can acquire jade. That's quite important. Uh, these are very valuable uh, on this particular action space here. You can spend cubes to get jade. Uh, to start with, they're quite cheap. They only cost two each. But then once those have gone, they cost three each, then four each, and then five potentially if you're getting one of these. Uh, but at the end of the game, you're getting points for having lots of jade. So the more jade you have, the more points you get. So potentially if you've got five, you get 15 points. And then every jade after that gives you another two points. So you want to collect as many jade as you can to get the points for that one. Um, other spaces then we've got are this kind of special ability area here. So you have to pay cubes to put one of your cubes on here. And then at the start of each round, this will get you a move on the all-important envoy track. Um, this lets you actually exchange cards with other cards on the board, which can be handy. These are like permanent special abilities. So for example, this one, whenever you buy a jade over here... It costs you one cube less. That's nice. Uh, this one lets you, when you stick a, a cube on the Great Wall of China, you get to put another one on for free. And then these two spots here are like end game scoring. So you're getting extra points for Jade or extra points for having shipped. What's shipping? Ah, we've got another track for shipping down here. So this action, you spend a cube to put it on your ship. You have these kind of ships and they start off at the start of one of these rivers. And you stick your cube on it. And it can sort of sail down the river like this. You sort of take, when you take the action, it sails. And if you manage to fill up by putting cubes on this, your ship, then you can take one of these special actions. So either you get four points 
or you can get an extra card. There's like a deck of cards and you grab an extra card and effectively that means now instead of playing four cards each round, you get a fifth card to play each round. So you kind of get like an extra action each round that just goes in your hand. Uh, or you can get the double worker. Ooh. So if you unlock your double worker, he kind of goes into your normal worker supply. But when you have to spend a worker, um, so for example, if you wanted to get the special movement here by spending two cubes, he like counts as two cubes. So you can spend him as two cubes and then you could do the better action. But then when you're gaining cubes, there's various ways you can gain cubes. For example, for example, if you spend here and gain a cube, he effectively is one cube when you're gaining him. So you can kind of spend him to get two, but when you gain him, you only need one to gain him. So he's very handy. So that's what you're getting from this track. Uh, if you get to the end, you can sort of pick whatever you like. And finally, <laughs> there's the traveling track at the top. So uh, when you start, you sort of put your horsey somewhere on here and you kind of get one move, or if you spend extra cubes, you get more moves, um, but you kind of move onto the spots and get the stuff. So if you move onto this one, that gets you another move on the Envoy track. Uh, if I moved onto this one, that gets me another cube. Uh, there are various kind of special abilities and things. This one will increase the value of the cards that you play by one. Uh, so you kind of move around and at the end of each round, they're filled up. So you play the game over four rounds and each round you're playing through all your different action cards, spending your cubes to take the abilities, trying to kind of gain as many cubes back as you can, but ultimately really trying to gain victory points. Uh, so you're getting victory points from the various spaces you can see here. They're giving you victory points. The Jade are worth quite a lot of victory points at the end. Uh, but then there's lots of little ways of getting points throughout the game as well. It's very much point salad. There's an awful lot to do. You never have enough time to do everything you want. Uh, but yeah, what do we think? Uh, wow, it's great. <clears throat> um, so before I go into uh, bits of the game, I don't think I've seen that before. There's a certain track that if you don't get to the top and you can't win. So I know like in uh, Study in Emerald or something, there's a, there's a condition of the winning team or something. But this is really nice. Like towards the end, there were two players way down on the track and they spent a lot of their last turn just using all their actions to just get up that track somehow. So that was uh, that was really nice and that's really unique. Um, there's just so much to think about. So there's there's two things to think about a lot. One, resource management is key. Like you run out of workers, you run out of cards. Having extra cards is great. Having extra workers is great. But you've got to keep kind of your supply of both of those up just so that you kind of have the chance to do what you've got. And then there's the card play. So each card, uh, when you're playing a card, you're getting two things, the thing on the card and the thing in the spot you want. But you have to play a card strictly higher unless you can mitigate it. There are ways to mitigate things. So you've got that to think about. Do I play this card here? And loads of the cards have actions on the bottom that allow you to do other action spots on the board. So this card here, wherever you play it, you get to do the shipping action and then the action of the spot. Um, so if you've got that in your hand, you think, well, great, at some point this time I'm going to do shipping, so I don't need to go to the shipping spot, I can go wherever I want, and then you, that's really great. Um, and so you're thinking about this, and then obviously if you go lots of easy places to go, and your next round, you've got ones, two, threes, and fours in your hand, and then you're going to really struggle next time. So not only that, you have to think about what card am I going to claim for the round after. Obviously, if you claim an eight or a nine, that gives you loads of flexibility. But on the eights and nines, there are very rarely any kind of like special abilities. Uh, all the good ones are on some of the lower tiles. The ones that get your cubes are really powerful because you can play a cube, get your double worker back. Um, Jonathan said at the very start that he said that in the rule book, it says you might underestimate the value of the double worker. Try it out. You'll see it's great or something like that. And that's what the rule book says. And so... Uh, all of us got our double worker really quick and the double worker is fantastic. It allows you to kind of like every time you get a little bonus action to get you a cube back, you're effectively getting two cubes back every time. Um, so that's key. It's integrated really well. The decisions you've got on your turn are great. My only negative is that it's a bit AP prone and mainly because um, you don't know your full scope of actions until it's your turn. Uh, I can think on Jonathan's turn, oh, I, I could go there or there or there. And then he could play a card that gives you another option. He could play a card to eliminate one of the options for you. Oh, and I now can't do what I wanted to do because he's gone in that spot, it costs him more to go there, or he's played a number higher than the ones I've got in my hand. I need to think of other things. So I often found that you, you, if you can potentially people on your turn, but it was difficult sometimes since there's a lot of slow turns because people can re-evaluate re the whole board each time. Uh, but other than that, I thought it was great. Mark? Yeah, this has done amazingly well to take... I mean, the, the basic worker placement thing is relatively makes sense, but the raw style, if I take play this card, I get the card back, and I need to care about it for the next turn. Just uh, enhance it all the way through. Especially with the fact that work's so tight, and if Jonathan shows you right at the top of here, you get 
at the end of the round in your discard pile, you check how many times you, you, the card, numbers on your cards match those, and you get extra workers back if they match up. So you not only care about it for the numbers you go for the next round, you really care because if I match those, I'm going to have extra workers for free that other people don't have. And that really it just adds another dimension to the way you're thinking. If, if it didn't have that raw style thing, I think it would be a decent but not amazing work placement. But I think that adds just that little bit more to take it away from the from the rest of the pack just makes it feel different when you play it it's quite good there's lots of the different ways of scoring and you can i think you do want to score a bit on a lot of them and in case like try and optimize one specifically but there are lots of different ways you can score points which is good uh, the competition's constantly high because you constantly care about what other people are going to play you can't get done in by other people who, just before you're about to play your card, you're like, I'm going to get that spot, hopefully. And then they play a nine on it, and you're like, well, that's done me in for now. And with that, as Steve said, he's correct. At that point, you've suddenly now got to rethink your next action, make next several actions. But, I mean, I think that's a worthy price to pay for the, the mechanisms involved in the game. Right. I would give it a, a good solid eight. Okay. Uh, I think it's great. I think I'll give it a nine. Mm, okay. Yeah, I think I summarised it very well. It is very tight. And the first time you play it, you're going to find it very hard to get cubes. But when you look at it, you can actually get cubes from lots of different places. But there's no kind of one obvious place to get cubes from. But there's just, like, the great thing about it and the negative about it really is the fact that you've got so many options. It is very AP prone because you sit there and go, oh, I could go here. Oh, then I could go here. And then they say someone puts a different card and it's like, oh, that changes what I've got to do. I've got to rethink my options. But that kind of thought process is really immersing. You're trying to think the action on the card is going to be really useful for me. But then where do I use the card? And then the number's got to be higher. And, oh, but what card am I going to get for the next round? You know, all those things you're trying to think about all at the same time. With all the different traveling icons as well, whenever you go traveling, you're picking up those tokens. And tokens you've already claimed, you can spend for extra bonuses after you've got the main bonus on it. There's lots of little things they've added in there. You know, I've only given a very brief overview in terms of the rules. I think it's fantastic. So it's really solid package, really engaging all the way through. I've gone a 9 out of 10. All right, thanks very much for watching. That was... Gugong!